Hi everybody, I'm Sarah and welcome to the Big Blue House Homestead. I wanted to share a pickle recipe with you. I've never tried this recipe before, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot because I find sometimes when you find recipes in older cookbooks, they were tried and true. Um, they were recipes that everybody went by and very, very good recipes to begin with, but they also learned how to preserve and can and, you know, do those things with food that we don't know how to do nowadays. Now I'm getting mine out of one of these old church cookbooks. Being that it was printed in the late 70s, if you know about these church cookbooks, they're usually compiled by the elderly in the church communities. And so if these people in the 70s are putting it in there and calling them grandma's recipes, date that back, you know, 30 to 60 plus more years. And this is a really old recipe. It is not a vinegar based recipe and it is not a recipe that you can. This is one that you ferment naturally in the sun. These are called sunshine pickles. Very simple basic ingredients. Everything that's going on in your garden can be used in this. In fact, the only thing that I'm throwing in that I can't grow is the salt because I don't live near an ocean and I can't harvest my own salt. So I do have a bag of pickling salt, but everything else came directly from my garden. I'll show you the ingredients and we're gonna chop up some of these cucumbers and we're gonna make some sunshine pickles today. Okay, I'm gonna do four jars because I'm gonna do spears and slices. And with the way my kids eat pickles, we should go through this pretty quickly, but I have a lot of cucumbers. I mean, you can see the pile starting here and I have still, you know, misshapen ones because they're just not growing 100% the way they should. But then I still have, you know, nice looking cucumbers. I wanna use up as much as I can because that's part of having a garden. You have to use up your produce. You cannot let it go to waste. You put the energy and the effort in, make do with it. Don't waste it. If you're not gonna eat it, give it out, give it to friends, whatever you want. But it calls for garlic, so I have a clove or a whole head from Garlic I Grew, and I have a couple spare cloves in case I need more. Um, on this plate, I have some fresh dill out of the garden and some grape leaves off my grapevines. Now, if you've never used grape leaves when it comes to cooking or canning or anything, it's a very old school way of doing things. Okay, so grape leaves themselves are excellent because they have a natural tannin in them and it will actually help the cucumbers not spoil. I don't know if that would make sense to most people, but this is your natural preservative that normally would be an MSG or a maltodextro this. No, this is a natural preservative. So grape leaves in old recipes are very beneficial because they're showing you the old ways. So what I've got is I've got my pile of grape leaves, my dill, my garlic. I'm going to throw in a little bit of these pickling spices just to see if I can change up the flavor and see how that happens. Um, other than that, it's straight up cucumbers, some pickling salt, and some water. Very easy recipe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get my garlic ready. And then I'm going to get my jars open. They're already sterilized. And because I'm not canning them, I don't have to heat them. But I'm going to get my jars open. I'm going to drop my garlic in. I'm going to drop some dill in. And we're going to get this process going. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take these and I'm going to drop them into my jars. If you didn't know it, garlic has a natural sugar, and that's part of the reason why it's sticky when you touch it. So it's just one of those things where cutting, peeling, all of that can be a little bit messy because of the natural sugars in garlic. All right, I've got my cloves of garlic in, and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut cucumbers. Like I said, they're weird shaped, but I'm just going to cut the ends off both. I have a variety of cucumbers here. I've tried to grow quite a few different types this year just to be able to figure out which ones I liked. And also I'm not very successful because of my soil. So it was just one of those things. I just threw a bunch of cucumbers in buckets and I figured if I grew at least one of each type, I would try them. These are all washed and cleaned. I do have some bruising issues on them, uh, cracking, splits, scarring, all of that. I'm not gonna worry about it because they're my pickles. They're not commercial pickles. And so these I'm just going to slice. If you have a mandolin, you can use it. Um, just slice them. Pickle size, you know, for your pickle jars. Do however you want to. I mean, I've seen people with mandolins. I'm terrified of them just because I don't want to lose a finger. Eventually, I'll have to start getting over that. <laughs> 
But for now, I'm just going to use a knife and I'm going to slice all of these pickles up. Okay, I do want to add real quick while I'm still slicing cucumbers. Whenever you're doing anything out of your garden and you're going to preserve it, you want to make sure it's as fresh as possible. As things get older, uh, enzymes come out stronger and it can actually spoil your food faster. So the fresher, the better. Sometimes young cucumbers are what people only use for pickle, you know, pickles and stuff. I, like I said, I've got a couple varieties here. They all look different. But just make sure it's fresh. You don't want squishy. You don't want gross. You don't want old. You want nice, crisp product. Okay, I probably have enough here to go ahead and fill one of my jars. I'm going to just fill, you know, regular quart-sized mason jar. You don't have to worry about debubbling and things of that nature because this isn't a canning. It's just almost like a refrigerator pickle. You can can them afterwards if you wanted, but it would probably cook them and make them a little mushy. So these are, you know, the type that you stick in your fridge and they'll do their magic outside in the sun. And when they come inside, then they're ready to go and, you know, finish pickles. Looks like I probably need to add a little bit more to this jar. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and slice up a couple more to put in here. Get that jar nice and packed. Alright. Okay, I'm going to set this part to the side because I'm just going to show you how to do both types. What I'm doing now is I'm going to do the spheres. Got some extra seed over here. But I'm going to cut the ends off of these as well. I have seen them where only one end is cut. You know, when you buy store-bought cucumbers, only one end is cut. That's the blossom end always. But I go ahead and cut both just because I think it uniforms them and makes them better. These are smaller cucumbers compared to a larger one. And so what I'm just going to do with these is I'm going to cut them in half and then cut them in half again. And this smaller one going to make a smaller spear, which is fine. They're all going to pack in the jars. And then when you get to a really large cucumber, like this one's a lot larger, if I'm not comfortable having the large spears, then I can just cut it in half. And then I can cut these in half, and then I'm going to do in thirds. I'll do in thirds on that because those are, you know, a big pickle piece. So yeah, I'm just gonna get all these cut up and then I'll show you how to pack them in jars. The first jar I did was a regular mouth and this is a large mouth. Uh, the reason why you want a large mouth when you do spears because it makes it easier to get out of your jars. These regular mouth, you can just stick a fork in. If you pack that full of spears, they're almost impossible to get out. So what I like to do is I like to lay my jar on its side and just lay the cucumber slices in and start stacking them beside each other first. And I usually get about four in, maybe five, and then I start adding more in towards the middle. And they'll start to move and, and you know, change direction on you. Just pack them in as tight as you can. All right, and when I get to about this point, I'm now going to shove the pickles over and push them to the side because I want to kind of keep a hole here in the center. I've got the smaller ones, so they're going to take up probably two spaces worth. So I'm going to get my fingers in there and push those all the way in. But I'm going to pack this jar as full as I can. All right, and now I've got all my spears laid in. So I'm just gonna show you how to do the two jars. I'll do the other ones on my own, but let's go ahead and talk about the next steps now. Okay, so I've got a big container of water here. I've got my two jars of pickles and I have my pickling salt. At this point, I'm going to add a tablespoon's worth of pickling salt or kosher salt. You do not wanna use iodized salt. You wanna make sure it is intended for canning, so I'm gonna add a tablespoon into each. Sounds like my kids are coming back in, they've been out harvesting. So I've got a tablespoon of salt in each one. 
Okay, so my kids are complaining because it's hot. It's like 92 degrees outside and they were out there picking for me. But that's because I've already been through and did all the vining and the pruning and played around in the garden. So anyway, I've got my plate here with my fresh dill and my grape leaves. And at this point, my flowers have all also like withered a little bit. I've got a couple flower heads. And I'm just going to stick my sprigs of dill on top. The stem of dill also has a lot of flavor in it. So you can use that. It's not going to hurt you at all. So I recommend leaving it on just for extra flavor. But that's a personal choice. If you don't want the stem and you just want the leaves, then just put the leaves in. But I'm going to go ahead and pack that all across the top of my jar as best I can. And you only need as much dill as you would want. I'm actually going to add quite a bit to this just because I've never had these pickles and we like them really dilly. So I would say that if that was a head of flowers and maybe four sprigs off the side. If you were doing this with a dried dill, I would say it's probably like two tablespoons worth, um, if not a little bit more. And I have one more piece, so I'm going to stick that in there, and I have to go pick more dill today. All right, and there's another piece of dill. Dill, dill, dill. All right, got the dill in. So both jars have the dill on top. And now what I need to do is I need to pour the water in. You need to use well water or distilled water. Whenever you do anything with fermenting or canning, if you use city water, it has chemicals in it. It doesn't work the same. It will ruin the product. So just make sure it's distilled or well water. So I'm just going to pour this in and top off these pickles. You want to completely cover them with water. And like I said, I'm not canning them, so I don't have to worry about air bubbles or anything like that. I just have to... Get them covered in the water. And I have to say, that's a beautiful batch of pickles already. Wouldn't you agree? Those are some pretty cucumbers. All right, and now with the grape leaves. I usually have larger leaves. My plants are struggling a little bit. I haven't pruned them. I haven't done anything with them. And so I just have smaller leaves. I do have some larger. But about four or five grape leaves is all you need. Just remove the stem all the way to the leaf because you only need the leaf part. And I'm going to go ahead and get five put onto each one. And the good part about grape leaves as well is they act as a weight. You'll see people who make sauerkraut and they put a, you know, the end of the cabbage on it or the extra piece from the head. People who use ferment weights, you know, grape leaves do the same thing. And again, like I said, they're very beneficial to old school canning because, look, that's a pretty leaf. They have a natural tannin to go ahead and preserve your food better rather than throwing in all those chemicals. I think that's part of the reason why I really wanted to try this recipe is because it was as natural as possible and it was 100% from my yard except for the salt. Now, if I still lived in Charleston area, I could definitely go down to the beach, get some salt water, filter it out a little bit, clean it up a little, and you know what? I could set it out in the sun, dry it out, and make my own salt, but that's a little much. All right, so I think that's enough grape leaves. So what I'm going to do now at this point is I'm just going to press these in until they get underneath the water. And that way it will act as if, you know, the weight on a ferment would be. And they're going to keep all those pickles and dill submerged underneath the water for me. So I don't know if you can tell by that, but there's all water on the top of these now. And these leaves aren't even really sticking out or exposed. So there's the pickles. Now, if you didn't want to put garlic on the bottom, you could put it on the top. You could put it in the middle. You can do the same with the dill. Reality is, all this is going to infuse and flavor throughout both jars of pickles evenly. So, I'm not worried about it. So, I put garlic on the bottom, dill on the top, and let's hope they meet in the middle. Now, we're going to put a lid on these because these pickles are done. And you see how easy this is? If you're not used to canning and you don't know how to can, but you're trying to learn ways to preserve things, you're looking for a good possible, you know, start to fermenting. This is an excellent recipe. Oh, I've got seeds on me. But this would be an excellent recipe. I have never tried the pickles, but I've tried other things similar. But this is a natural, you know, 100% all natural from my garden, from my yard, except for the salt, and just some great water. And that's it. Very easy, simple recipe. Now, let me show you how we finish these pickles off. Okay, set them on a table, set them on a stump, 
I have a shelf over here that I use as a washing station. I put a simple little tray down that I use for my greenhouse and I put the pickles in it just so they wouldn't fall through. That's how you finish the pickles. Put them in the sunshine. That's why they're called sunshine pickles. Just walking out there, it's hot. It's a hot, hot day. So I'm gonna pull my hair back up because I'm a little disheveled, ran out barefoot. I'm gonna step on a bee, lots of fun. But yeah, very simple recipe, easy recipe. Stick them in the sun. Sunshine pickles. That's what they are. Sunshine pickles. If you think about it, you can infuse tea in the sun. You can make coffee in the sun. You can cook in the sun. So why not ferment and make your own pickles in the sun? Seven days is all it takes. You put them out there. Wait seven days. Mark your calendar. Put a uh, note on your phone. Whatever you need to do. An alarm. All of that. Go back and check them in seven days. Once that's finished, I'm going to pull them and we're going to give them a taste test and we're going to see how these sunshine pickles turned out because I'm excited. I mean, honestly, 100% from my yard except for the salt. My well water, my cucumbers, my dill, my garlic, my grape leaves, you know, all of it. So I didn't put the pickling spices in yet. I still have two jars to do and I'm going to put those out. But I'm going to add the pickling spice just to see if I can add a little bit of flavor. I don't want to add sugar. So if you're thinking about doing a bread and butter this way, sugar will actually turn to alcohol when it's warm like that. So don't add sugar to the jars. But you could add sugar when you put them in your refrigerator and let them sit in there and that would sweeten up the pickles. But I'm just gonna add them for flavor and we'll see. So yeah, I'm gonna finish up the pickles today and get this done. I hope you guys enjoyed the recipe. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I'm still new to YouTube, only a few months in and we're looking at you know two months into my garden and it's grand and beautiful and I'm produce everywhere and I really want you guys to learn how to eat what you grow grow what you need and simple homestead tips um I'm still new to this too third year into homesteading but I do want to share my knowledge and my experience and help others out there that need that so if you're new to the channel please hit the subscribe button leave a comment below let me know how you make your pickles or if you've ever tried a recipe like this um if you're scared of it let me know too because I've never done it and we'll do this together I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.